Hey there, this is Nick broadcasting to you yet again on the wonderful and fascinating Get Me Off Grid video blog, which is a video blog whereby I talk about wonderful ideas on how, basically, to go completely and utterly off grid. I'm doing this because I want to show you that I've got some of the basic knowledge and basic wisdom that one would actually need if one was to take the leap, take the plunge, so to speak, and go towards a completely off grid lifestyle. I don't think I can do it completely and utterly by myself in order to, you know, get the land sorted out and the rest of it. But, you know, if you could spare a few pennies, you can send it through on the donation link below. Obviously, you don't have to, just carry on subscribing, watching the videos to see the ideas that I'm coming out with on a regular basis. Now, I'm still waiting for the solar cells to come through, the photovoltaic solar cells, so I can actually create the photovoltaic panel, which I'm planning on. Uh, I've got everything ordered, or the only other things I need to do is to get like the backing board sorted out, uh, make sure that's uh, nice and strong and varnish, and also get the, um, get the acrylic top sorted out, bead it, and then, hey presto, I can just assemble the cells and just make something really, really cool that can generate a lot of electricity. And I'll be able to show you like the workings out of how this um, can operate and also what it can be used for. As I said, today I'm talking about heat. Why? I know it's a beautiful spring's day. It's May in the year of 2011. It's gorgeous outside. Why would I be talking about heat? Because of the depth of the winter. Uh, and winters around here can in fact be pretty bad, especially during this particular, you know, climatic issues we've got at the moment. We have our winters going down to minus 20 Celsius, so essentially finding ways to generate heat when you are off-grid, especially background heat, is going to be quite a big issue. So I come up with an idea which I'm telling you about now, and the idea is to incorporate storage heaters into your own design. Why would you use storage heaters? Typically they work on what's called the Economy 7 system here in the UK which is when you get a separate meter, the electricity flips over to the separate meter, you'll build a different amount during the day than you are at night. The nighttime charge is about half of what normal people pay, and essentially that's the energy which then goes into the heaters to charge them up for a period of seven hours with heat, and then they'll release their heat during the day. Now, let's say you're not on the grid itself. Let's say you're in a completely off-grid situation, you're only getting your energy from wind power, solar energy, and once in a while you've got something like a biomass generator, let's say it's a GEC, you know, a gasifiers experimental experimenters kit, or maybe it's one of the FEMA planned wood gas downdraft gasifiers, which is rigged up to an engine, which is also a generator, so that can generate you power. Or alternatively you use biodiesel, let's say. Let's say those are just the solutions you've got actually on your land at that time and you want heat at night and during the day. What could you do? Well, storage heaters are great. They take the energy which is put in, they store it for a long period of time and they release it slowly in the form of heat. You can get a power rating for a storage heater to be anything from 0 0.8 kilowatts up to about 3.5 kilowatt. Okay? And they're designed to take energy in for a short period of time, maybe seven hours, and then put it out. Let's say that you've got great sunshine on a winter's day, and you could actually generate two kilowatts worth of electricity with your photovoltaic panels. And yes, that does involve having quite a few panels, but let's say you could do it. Why not have that go straight into your storage heater? So essentially by the end of the day, it's nice and full, it's eking out heat slowly, throughout basically the rest of the night so that your place stays warm. That's the first idea. Secondly, you can have it rigged up to wind power. You work out when the wind's going to blow strongest. You connect your storage heater up to the wind turbine and collect your energy that way. If you got no wind and if you got no sun, then essentially that's when you use your biomass, whether that's wood pellets going through a downdraft gasifier or whether that's something like um, you know a biodiesel system, you know, a generator which has been rigged to work on biodiesel and you've got the ability to make biodiesel basically on your land. Biodiesel is essentially just a vegetable oil, used vegetable oil, it's been treated in a certain way so that you can then extract it and pour it into your tank and then basically run your diesel vehicle off it. Sometimes you need to adjust the timing on it but essentially to the most part it should work out okay. You can't use SVO, straight vegetable oil and there is a problem with biodiesel in the winter in the fact that if it gets too cold it can get like jelly-like and it won't flow through your system. So you could use another system which would essentially be alcohol so you can then distill your own alcohol on your site and you could use that in a petrol engine and that's if you're not using wood gas.
So there are ways to generate power, whether you've got sun and wind or whether you've not got sun and wind, there's ways to store it so that in the dead of the winter when you've got temperatures of minus 20, your property can still keep warm if you were to use storage heaters. And you could use that just throughout the, you know, throughout the season anyway, as long as you're perpetually adjusting and taking into account what you know about the weather and what you know about your energy economy. If you're living based upon uh, you know, just total off-grid living, you spend your energy a bit like money. You work out how much is coming, you work out roughly how much you've got, you work out how much you can afford to spend. All right? That's if you're completely off-grid. And of course, you use your other systems, your backup systems, such as wood gas, such as alcohol, such as biodiesel, for when you just need an extra energy boost. You could also set up, if you had enough space, and this is where it gets into a bit like fantasy land, okay? Uh, you can set up your own hydroelectric system. Now, I, I personally would envisage a small hydroelectric system of uh, just like two water butts, one high, one low, with a water wheel in between, and so you can turn on the flow of water when you want, let's say, an extra 25 or 50 watts worth of power. But that's the way I would envisage it. I wouldn't envisage something massive that could run consistently for seven hours because that would be more or less impossible, uh, taking into account the kind of space restrictions that we're talking about. But there's ways of doing it, and storage heaters look like they're going to provide the way, the truth, and the light for the off-grid survival type environment situation on the basis that you're using renewables. That's what I'm talking about today. Wish me luck for when those solar cells come through because, you know, I'm getting excited about that. I'm looking forward to making some good wattage, maybe um, different size panels, different type of panels for different applications, and it's going to be cool. Speak to you in a while.